Hey, everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel. Jim, we have scoring. That's good. And Justin Jackson is doing some of that scoring, too. So uh, no complaints here, Greg. As long as Justin Jackson is racking up fantasy points, all is well in the world. So I'm a happy camper. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. I'm excited to talk about some of the players whose stocks are up, like Justin Jackson. We'll get to him in just a few moments. But we're going to begin in Pittsburgh with Chase Claypool, who, you know, put up the four, not for the four horsemen and not for fourth down, but because he had four touchdowns here. I feel like fantasy owners have been waiting all year for this breakout because they knew it was possible. Well, then it happened on Sunday with over 39 FanDuel points. I think the question now is... Not that can Clay Chase Pool do Chase Claypool, excuse me, do it again, but what can we expect from him going forward? I think you can expect a wide range of outcomes in both the positive and the negative sense, because it seems like a lot of the work that Chase Claypool will get will be downfield. In the two games where he has had elevated snaps, Claypool has averaged 3.5 deep targets per game. That does include week three, when he didn't really do a whole lot. Four total targets there, three deep targets. He had four deep targets again on Sunday and obviously did very well on those, but those are volatile targets. I personally like that because it means he can get you a week winning game like he had in week five. But some people may be annoyed because the floor may not be that good. One thing that will help the floor with Chase Claypool is that he's getting he's getting creative touches. He's gotten three rush attempts, or he got three rush attempts on Sunday. That means the Steelers want the ball in his hand, and they're going to do what they have to do to get the ball there. That's a good thing for his floor. And like I said, he has a path to a really good ceiling. Now, Deontay Johnson will definitely get targets when he's healthy, so I wouldn't expect 11 targets in every game for Chase Claypool, but if he can get you, you know, seven or so targets, which is what Juju Smith-Schuster was getting previously, and a lot of those being downfield, that's a pretty valuable commodity. So I think that Chase Claypool, even with Deontay Johnson having missed most of that game on Sunday, we can still expect big things from Claypool, maybe not 39 points big, but still enough to be reliable in fantasy with a big ceiling. So I don't think this is a fluke. He may not have run a ton of routes on Sunday, but it's very clear the Steelers want the ball in his hands, and that's what I care more about. So Chase Claypool, I think we should buy into what we saw from him on Sunday. Claypool is obviously very talented. It comes from a long list of successfully drafted Steelers wide receivers. We drafted early in this year's NFL draft, and this is not some long shot seventh rounder. This is a guy that the Steelers have invested in, and they expect a lot from. And he's, we saw what that ceiling could be this past Sunday. And we'll see, hopefully, what that floor will be over the next few weeks. Chase Claypool, somebody well worth monitoring, both in daily fantasy and in season long. Now, not someone highly invested in, not someone we expected all that much from, it's Travis Fogel from the Philadelphia Eagles, who just burst in into 26 FanDuel points this past weekend. He was just ridiculous all over the field for Carson Wentz with every one of those top wide receiver options unhealthy and injured for this game. It was Fulgham that stepped up. Now the question remains, can he do it again? He might have to, because honestly, can the Eagles be allowed to be picky right now? I don't <laughs> think they can. They don't have enough healthy bodies to turn away productivity. That's what Travis Fulgham has given them, not just uh, yesterday or Sunday, but also back, you know, he had that touchdown in week number four too. We've seen him be good when he's been on the field and the Eagles are not in a chance to bench productive players. So sure, they're going to get to Sean Jackson. They're going to get Alshon Jeffrey, eventually Jalen Rager and Dallas Goddard too. But if you perform on this team with the way the offense has been going, how do you shelve this guy right now? So I think that Travis Fulgham probably going to be here to stay 13 targets, three deep and one in the red zone on Sunday. And that's important. So no, he's not going to get 13 targets every day. I would be shocked if he gets double digit targets again, the rest of the year, because that's just a really big number. But again, this Eagles offense need needs playmakers last year down the stretch when they needed guys to make plays, Boston Scott did so, and they rewarded Boston Scott by giving him volume. This coaching staff has shown they will be reactive and open to giving guys roles when they produce. We saw Fulgham produce on Sunday, so no, he's not going to have as big of a role as he had on Sunday. But he's still going to have a role. Alshon Jeffrey, what has he done to justify playing him over Travis Fulgham in the past two and a half years? Not a whole lot. So Fulgham, sure, he will get downgraded when Deshaun Jackson is back, which will likely be this upcoming week, but... I don't think that matters. So Travis Fulgham, definitely someone who should have a role in the Eagles going forward because I don't think they have the leverage to say no to someone who could do what Fulgham did on Sunday. 
You mentioned what Boston Scott did late last year. I'll throw in what Greg Ward did late last year in the same exact scenario with the Eagles without any wide receivers. It was Ward that stepped up and is still starting for this team. Uh, all these games later, it's just about opportunity. Greg Ward has stepped up. Now Travis Fulgham has stepped up as well. Do we expect him to do what he did with double-digit targets and all those receptions and all those yards and the touchdown? No, we, we don't. But I think he's here to stay. He's earned that opportunity. And Doug Peterson, Deuce Staley, and his coaching staff in Philadelphia provides the opportunity to those that deserve it. Travis Fulgham is one of those guys right now. You started the show off talking about Justin Jackson, and those Josh Kelly owners were not happy on Monday night with Justin Jackson getting more carries, more touches, more yards, and more productivity in this Chargers offense. Now, I saw some people on social media defending it as a better matchup for Justin Jackson. It worked out in his favor, but Josh Kelly will still be the man going forward. But as someone that watched that whole game, I don't know. Justin Jackson just looked better. Yeah, you tend to want to give volume to players who play well. And Justin Jackson looked really good on Monday night. So, again, I kind of don't think the Chargers are in position to be all that picky. Justin Herbert's playing really well, and you kind of want someone out there who can catch the football. And Justin Jackson showed that he could do that on Monday. I kind of think that's the key here. It's not the rushing productivity, which was awesome for Justin Jackson. It's the fact that he was the guy who was getting the targets. Six total targets for Justin Jackson on Monday night, and he kind of played closer to the Austin Eckler role than Joshua Kelly did. He ran around on 50% of the team's dropbacks, according to Pro Football Focus, whereas Kelly was at just 30%, and Jackson was the guy who got the ball on third down. He had two carries and one target on third down. Joshua Kelly, no carries, no targets on third down. I think that's a pretty key thing here. So I don't think Justin Jackson's going to get touchdown chances because Joshua Kelly got the lone carry inside the 10-yard line last night. And based on the way they've used him so far this year, that's probably going to continue to be the case. However, if Jackson's getting, you know, 10 to 15 carries and five or so targets, he might still wind up being the better fantasy player just because that volume is so key. You need yardage to, you know, to, to pay off even if you get a touchdown. And Kelly may not be getting that. So I think that Justin Jackson is legit. When Joshua Kelly had his big breakouts, that was when Justin Jackson was banged up. In week four, when we saw Joshua Kelly play a pretty big role, that was Justin Jackson's first game back from injury. Jackson looked good. He gets passing down work. He was in the game on third down. I think those are a lot of signals to us that say we should trust Justin Jackson going forward. This does not say Joshua Kelly does not matter. Like, he's still going to have a role in this offense. He's going to score touchdowns. But if I had to pick between one, as of right now, give me Justin Jackson over Joshua Kelly. Justin Jackson and those targets is the key. You've always pointed out, Jim, here on The Hurry, just how much more important the targets are compared to carries, compared to anything else. That's what Justin Jackson received last night. He was fantastic at blitz pickup as well. Justin Jackson, I believe the Chargers are going to rely on going forward, which means you'll be able to rely on Justin Jackson as well, coming out of the bye, which the Chargers now have here in Week 6. Jim, although some people can say the Chargers had a bye anyway because they're facing the Jets, but they'll face the Jets for their second bye a little bit later on this season. Now the Jets, they have the Dolphins instead, which means... Ryan Fitzpatrick's going to be out back on our radar. So I'm excited to talk about him and Devontae Parker. I know it's coming in the Stacks edition on Friday. I'm excited. We can negotiate that one. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, I'm always in favor of some Fitz magic and a revenge game. Don't forget, Greg. I know it's a revenge game every week for Ryan Fitzpatrick, but like it's a, especially a revenge game this week. So we'll negotiate that one. If you slip me a five or so, I might wiggle that in for Friday. It's not just a revenge game for Ryan Fitzpatrick. It's a revenge game for the Miami Dolphins against True. Adam Gaze. Like, this is adding up to an awesome, awesome opportunity on Friday. We'll discuss it then. But, Jim, I appreciate the time. Good luck this week, and I can't wait to talk to you this weekend. Looking forward to it, Greg. Appreciate it, and good luck to you until then. For Jim Sonis, I am Greg Sussman. Join me tomorrow when I'll be joined by Tom Vecchio and Megan Nunez. Two sets of videos coming out tomorrow as we take a look at DFS here for week six. And we'll go over Megan's best bet for the week. Have a great night, and we will talk to you then. Enjoy Bills and Titans tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.